Now we're doing the receiver grooves. Now the receiver groove is all about, in the cylinder head, we put a stainless steel hoop. That hoop uh, is machined into the cylinder head and then protrudes out of the cylinder head. When it protrudes out of the cylinder head, let me do it here. Uh, here's the hoop and here's the receiver groove. It needs to push the copper head gasket into the receiver groove. So that's the receiver groove that we're making right now. If you want to know more about that, go to one of my videos on uh, sealing in the boost, I think is that video on my website or on my playlist on YouTube. I explain the gasket, I explain the hoops, I explain the receiver grooves. So what this is doing is, now every tool also is set up off of this tailstock dimension right here. So the machine knows the height of the tool. So the offset, why the absolute numbers up here, uh, I'm probably giving you too much information here. <laughs> the offset numbers are, are actual offset from where the tool position is here. So this would be zero. This the is main zero. center line is zero and well, we teach it off zero. that height. Right. Know, we just, it. yeah, we know what the, cent the center line of here to here is. So we touch every tool off of here. It's like a, a gauge block. So guys, uh, CNC guys would know what that would be all about. So every, every uh, tool is, Yep, there you go. Every tool is set off so we know exactly where this height is so we don't even have to touch off this height to here because we've already resurfaced it. We, the machine knows what height this is, knows what height this tool bit is, and we just tell it we want this tool bit to go 15, 10, whatever depth we want, and it does it. Point blank. So it knows the bores. We've made the bores in the correct orientation or the correct location. We've set our correct diameter of what we need the receiver groove to be. And now this is gonna go in and just ring, 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 and be done. So I'll show you that real quick. We're not going to bother putting the, the screen down because it doesn't throw chips real bad. Uh, looks like how deep is that? Doesn't look good. It probably looks like about ten. Yeah. Yeah. It's just practice. Yeah. This is just a practice, just to show you what's going on. It's not actually taking it to the correct depth, because correct depth uh, here would be 15, uh, 15 to twenty, depending on where I want it to be and what the protrusion is on the hoop. This already had receivers in it. And this already had the receiver grooves in it. So it's, we're just practicing here, and it's just showing mark we're just getting trained on how the machine works operates and how to do it we'll let the machine run and skim cut and then we can add in the program to achieve an accurate depth yeah so we can yeah te so technically we can we can do it either way we can uh, do it this way where we resurface first and then do the receiver grooves and that does leave a little uh uh, funny, burr. yeah, these a burr basically up here. Or we can program it to uh, bore, receiver groove, and then come in and resurface. Or we can resurface, bore, groove, and then come in and skim cut it. <laughs> Multiple different ways of doing it. So that is how we do the resurfacing. And uh, now we'll go into lifter bores and how it does a lifter bore, which is a, it has a very nice tooling package for the lifter bore. Let me show you the tool first, because I like the tool. So this boring head right here is a bad little ombre. And each tick in that uh, turn screw is a tenth of a thousandth. So a full turn is one thousandth. 
and each little tick there is a tenth of a thousand. So that is very accurate for moving this little boring head tool bit out. So I, I like that, that is nice and uh, relatively sure that's not cheap. So we don't wanna be crashing that niche. <laughs> okay, um, so we're gonna bore just two holes and show you how this works. Now, this is currently, because this is aftermarket block, we know where the crank or crankshaft center line is. We know where the camshaft center line is. We know where the dowel pin location is, which means we know where the bores are, where the cylinder head is at. So we know where the lifter bores go. There is a uh, slight, there is different way of doing it too. That's really only available on the Rottler. And I'll let Marty explain that just real briefly because don't want to get hung up in the weeds. If you're concerned about parallelism, parallelism between the crank and camshaft bores and straightness, you can fixture the cam bore in the center of the fourth axis, taking that out of the equation. Uh, that's the way oh, super perfect. stock pro stock guys are doing the, yep. the, so, the lifter bores. So if, you're, if your block was, if the you have the main tunnel perfectly straight, and if your cam tunnel was put in slightly off, uh, me personally, I would make make the cam tunnel perfectly straight and right, but you can uh, actually fixture it in the cam tunnel. Now this is highly exaggerated, okay? I mean, you're, you're talking thousands, not very much. You can fixture it in the cam tunnel and then the cam tunnel would be straight and parallel with the machine instead of the main tunnel. Correct. Yes. The, uh, don't get hung up on that but it is it is all things you can do so now let's go through here and we'll bore these two holes and we're not going to bother boring everything here i just want to show you how this works uh runs through and uh just it's nice it's it's going to be super fast and compared to and the surface finish that's there is really nice too which we'll just have to go through and just touch it with a hone just to knock off any high spots and that's it has a pretty slow feed rate so just plenty of clearance on the top side huh we're just got plenty of clearance on the top side so it's, it's coming down quick. oh it's still so the tool bit hasn't come down yet i think it's in there it's in there, uh, it's in there. It's not cut did you run did you go the right no, way probably went the wrong way well that's better than going the other the wrong other, way yeah. All right, so we're gonna reset the, that tool bit. So Mitch moved it out four, uh, five thousandths, but he actually moved it in five thousand. So now retract it nice and neat. So we'll go up here and turn that itty bitty little screw. So there's a set screw and there's the, adjust, the adjuster that moves the, the head out. See, I'm used to clockwise. It's counterclockwise to move this one. It's your story, Mitch. Tell it any way you want. It's my story and I'm sticking to it. There's one, two, three. So that should be just three? Uh, it's six thou, actually. It's it's two thou per revolution of that. Oh, two thou per yeah. revolution. My bad. Obviously, it doesn't have a spindle orientation for this procedure. It doesn't care. Yep. Yeah, yeah, at the end of the. Oh, it does. It does. Because it, it, it still wants. Yeah, yeah, it still wants. Yeah, it still wants to be over. Okay. You can turn that function on and off. There we go. Oh, 
out there trying out this for a second. Uh, about 30 is what I use as a maximum to not tear my tooling up. Okay. So when we're doing oversized lifter bores, or like this was a, is a 904 lifter, so that'd be 842 to 904, so that's 60, basically 60, 62,000. So uh, we do that in two, two swipes. Yep. We can yeah. sell uh, tooling if you're putting a bushing in to basically punch it out within 20,000 so your finish size. So you can rough it with a an end mill first and then just uh, finish with the micro boring heads. Yeah, so you're not yeah, so you're not uh, wasting time cutting small amounts. Uh, do you have the uh the to Installing the bushings? Uh, you mean a, like a keyed lifter bushing? The keyed lifter bushing. So they do locators. have an arbor that will push in and hold the spindle position for your keyed lifters for, for uh, oh. lifter uh, bushing installation. Yeah, that's that's been something why I've stayed away from a lot of that. And usually would have somebody else put in uh, lifter bushings, keyed lifter bushings, because it's a mother. But so you can put that in. So they got an arbor that holds it in the correct orientation and this has got enough beans to drive it in itself. That's good. All right, so this thing's just about done cutting all the way through. There we go. And stops the spindle, moves the tool away, comes up. Very nice, nice surface finish here. And can just, you can, that one's a nice finish right there. You normally use a ball hone just to deeper the edges of the oil hole and so forth. Yep, um, just use a ball hone. You can just bore run it through to there. size and ball hone it just to deeper it and give it a little bit of cross after you want. All right, now, so we wanted to experiment and see if Mitch has been paying attention and has learned what he's supposed to learn and can do this in a quick operation way, which we'll see. So we grabbed a stock 350 Chevy block very rare to even have, I think actually, actually we had to buy a stock 350 block because we don't normally do these, but we just wanted to put that up there and just uh, floor to floor. So we're gonna show you that real quick here in a uh, time lapse. So you see how we did that. I think we had a grand total of about two hours, two hours to from basically floor to floor. So put it in the machine, bore it 30, deck it uh, down to our spec, which is 9020, and uh, chamfer the top of the bores, offset cut the bottom of it. So complete, ready to home. Writing the programs. And, right. And, and probing it. Yeah, yeah probing it yeah. and everything. So that's floor to floor. That's really nice. I like that. So now. I'm uh, going to show you the stroker clearance programming that it has, which is nice, and that uh, takes this rougher, uh, one inch rougher end mill and comes down here in an arc and will hit the po points that we program it in to do stroker clearance. So it sends the tool bit on an arc like that, just like the connecting rod is swinging in the block. So I'll show you that real quick. And uh, this would add, oh, looks like it adds what, because we already have it programmed, already done for small block Chevrolet, probably adds what, half an hour total. So we could do a bore, deck, chamfer, all, this, all the processes there, even on the China wall and stroker clearance in two and a half hours total with a minimal minimal time uh, operator time involved in it so i like that so let's show you how this this works real quick and you'll see the it go down and uh sweep
uh, since it's uh, since we're not cutting a whole bunch here, can you override the speed just so it'll go a little bit quicker for the camera? Uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> there we go. It does have rapid speed, but it's not oh, it does do a rapid speed. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it just got another thing to go, and then it'll do rapid too. All right. The the uh, trying to rip the handrails on. All right. Yeah, let's get that out of the camera. So kind of shoot it from like that angle, Tyler. Or whatever you think. It'll wrap it here in another half an inch. So the tool bed is actually going up and down and yeah, it's sweeping. It's kind of, it's doing this. It's very gradual. It's You'll see it here in a second. It's kind of rapid. Yep, it's moving on your Z and Y axis simultaneously. Yep. There you go, you missed it. <laughs> oh, and ca camera operator Kyle missed it. That's all right. It wrapped it over, so it saved a much time coming up into there. So now it'll come in, and it's still following that arc like this. So it's taking minimal amount of unnecessary material. You can show my finger right here, right here. So it's, this whole thing is a curvature. It's curved like this. And you can see it here, and look at the, where it's not cut here, to where it continues up the cut. That little gap right there is going away. It's going to automatically go over and do the other side. So that's how the stroker clearance works on the F69. Very nice deal. At, uh, once it is all programmed in there and done, it makes a super fast, quick uh, way to avoid having to sit there and hand grind on stuff forever. So that's a real nice deal. Now we're going to be waiting for, uh, we're, they're just a little bit late on our. Uh, uh, a line bore stuff, but as soon as we get the line bore stuff, Marty's coming back and gonna train us on the line bore stuff. So, Marty's gonna take his cot with him and so he can bring it back later and do training on the uh, uh, on the 90 or on that 90 degree boring fixture, which is I'm uh, pretty excited about that because that's that's a really neat deal. And we have uh, line honed blocks that we're gonna run through there. That are freshly line honed so we can dye that dye it and then you'll be able to see exactly where the machine cuts versus where the hone hones to be interesting all right i'm steve morris have a great day